A very good morning uh, to all, uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, thank my Heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity to share His wonderful words of life uh, uh, with you all. So, I uh, thank my Almighty God and also the dear brethren uh, for giving me this privilege to share uh, some truths with you. Dear brethren, uh, as you all know, that uh, in the coming month, uh, we would be celebrating uh, the Lord's uh, memorial. And we have studied regarding the Lord's memorial that uh, this is actually an antitypical uh, fulfillment uh, of the Passover which the people of Israel, you see, uh, celebrated uh, the day before they left uh, Egypt. So, the Passover, which the people of Israel, uh, you see, did uh, as per Exodus 12 chapter, that was fulfilled, or that was anti that, that uh, was antitypically fulfilled, on the last day of our Jesus' uh, journey on this earth. So, let us read uh, Luke. Uh, Luke 22nd chapter, verse 15. Luke 22, 15. Luke 22, 15. And he said unto them with the desire, I have a desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See, Jesus mentioned that uh, with desire, have I desired to eat this Passover uh, with you, you see. So Jesus, what he conducted, the breaking of the bread, the drinking of the wine was actually a fulfillment of uh, the Lord's, uh, you see, uh, Passover, which was uh, actually given by the God in Exodus uh, uh, 12 chapter. Let us read Exodus 12, 14. Exodus 12, 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Oh, so, yeah. oh thank you, sir. So here, you see, the Lord mentions that this was an ordinance. That means this was a part of the law. That means if you see correctly, this was the first law which God gave to the people of Israel. And here it says that this is a feast for you. This is a feast for you forever and ever. So you need to observe it every year, you see, continuously. And the same thing Apostle Paul mentions uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, sorry, 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. 1 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 7 and verse 8. First Corinthians fifth chapter verse seven. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Very good. Sir. So even Christ uh, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So let us keep this feast. Uh, you see. So therefore, if you, see, you observe. There are a lot of similarities, uh, resemblance uh, in the Passover that was conducted in Egypt and the new antitypical Passover that is the Lord's Memorial that was instituted by our Lord. So today, what we are going to do is, we are going to take some time and see what are the similarities uh, between 
Exodus 12 chapter, the literal Passover and the antitypical Passover, Lord's memorial. First of all, the first thing that has to be observed here, that uh, in the literal Passover, you see, the day when uh, people of uh, Israel uh, were delivered from Egypt, uh, there were three things, uh, you see, that was used, uh, three emblems, uh, you see, or uh, three things uh, that was told by the Lord to do on that particular day. What is that one? Let us read Exodus 12, 8. Exodus 12, 8. Exodus 12, 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. See, this verse says that three things has to be done. That means the flesh has to be roasted with fire and ate in the night. This is the first thing. You see, the lamb that has to be roasted with fire and ate in the night. The first thing. And the second thing is that along with the unleavened bread, this was supposed to be partaken. And the third thing, it was uh, to be ate along with the bitter herbs. So these three things are mentioned here. One is the lamb, okay, and the second is the unleavened bread, and the third is the bitter herbs. So let us see, what are these three things? What is the meaning of these three things? First of all, you see, the lamb, you see, now why was the lamb supposed to be slaughtered there? You see, we know very well that uh, for the angel of death uh, to pass over a house, there a slaughter was necessary. That means uh, the angel of death, when he came to Egypt, uh, his purpose of visiting Egypt uh, was to, you see, uh, cause death uh, in Egypt. In every house, uh, they were supposed to a person to die. That means to shed blood in each and every house of Egypt was necessary. Hence, the angel of death came there. Hence, if he sees the blood on the doorpost, what would the angel do? You see, he would pass over. You see, he would skip that house. So, nobody would die in that house because already you see, the blood was there on the doorpost. Hence, uh, the angel would pass over. And for this angel to pass over, a lamb had to be killed. You see, and the blood uh, has to be poured on the doorpost. So, this is very important. That's the reason God told a lamb was supposed to be selected. Okay? And the second thing, why did God tell to eat it with unleavened bread. You see, now what is this uh, bread uh, that represents in the Bible? How does it uh, signify and what does it signify to the people of uh, Israel uh, who are suffering in Egypt? If you see, what work did the people of Israel do in Egypt? If you see, you see, they were not given any good uh, jobs and all, but good salary. But they had to work hard labor there. Where? In Egypt. You see, and uh, it was a very tough job for them. Pharaoh is to give them a lot of work and less of, uh, you see, rest and leisure. So, that was uh, very difficult uh, for the people of Israel to stay in Egypt. Hence, they started to cry to the Lord. Seeking for deliverance. Hence, uh, this bread, uh, you see, represents uh, the bread of affliction. Read Deuteronomy 16.3, brother. Deuteronomy 16.3. Deuteronomy 16.3. <clears throat> Thou shalt eat no leaven bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith. 
even the bread of affliction for thou comest forth out of the land of egypt in haste ah. that thou hast thank you sir so yes. there you see it says even the bread of, of affliction for thou camest forth out of the land of egypt in haste so that bread actually signifies the bread of affliction you see they were so much afflicted you see uh, so much of pain they were given so hence uh, they were always eager to come out of egypt so hence that bread when they were to partake that represents the, the remembrance of the bread uh, you see the remembrance of the affliction you see which they suffered in egypt okay now the third thing which god told them to eat uh, was the bitter herbs you see now uh, why was the uh, bitter herbs given literally you see when uh, if you are eating uh, any meat if you eat uh, bitter herbs that actually increases increases somebody's appetite to eat more and more of the meat so here uh, the bitter herbs uh, was the bitter bondage uh, you see which uh, the people of uh, israel suffered in egypt you see hence that bitter bondage made them you see to seek uh, more and more of uh, deliverance from egypt uh, and uh, one speciality about uh, this bitter herbs uh, and uh, this uh, bread was that how no how it has to be eaten it was to be eaten together in the greek if you see the bitter herbs and the bread you see was to be ate together must like a what do you eat like a sandwich you see so what are these two things together represents devadan uh, if you see the two things uh, together represents uh, the bitter you see a uh, bondage the bitter uh, you see afflictions uh, that was uh, you see uh, given to the people of israel uh, when they were in egypt read exodus 114 exodus 114 mother exodus 114 and they made their lives bitter with a hard bondage in mortar mm. at quick mm hmm and mm -hmm. it in all manner of service in the field all their service where in they made them service was with rigor thank you sir see it was they made their lives bitter it was complete uh, you see with rigor uh, you see it was a very hard bondage uh, this was together the affliction uh, the bondage uh, you see the sufferings uh, this were all together hence uh, the bread uh, and the bitter herbs was to be partaken together okay now hence god told these three things to be taken you see uh, on the day before the deliverance okay now let's let us come to the lord supper let, uh, let us see if uh, the same three things uh, are shown here also you see first thing what did our lord do he took the bread he broke the bread you see and gave to the disciples he took the cup you see and he gave it to he drank it and gave it to all his uh, disciples and jesus told that uh, this is my body broken for you and regarding the cup jesus said this is uh, my blood which is poured for the remission of sins and uh, you see he also mentioned that this is the blood of the covenant that means uh, by the death of jesus uh, there was a covenant uh, that was established uh, which is that covenant uh, you see huh? so brother i have taken uh, the three covenants uh, cast to you so so because of the sacrifice of jesus uh, you see so the covenant was established and for a covenant to be established you see there were actually three things that were necessary the one the sacrifice of a body 
and the shedding of blood then only that covenant will come into force into come into effect you see uh, therefore uh, in the book of hebrews uh, uh, you see it says no that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins uh, and uh, whenever there is a covenant uh, you see there should be a uh, death uh, read hebrews 9 chapter verse 17 and uh, 18 hebrews 9 17 and 18 for a testament is of force after men are dead otherwise it is of no strength at all while the tester lives 18 whereupon neither the first testament was decided without dedicated without blood sorry but Augusta. So here it says, if a covenant has to be established, you see, there should be a death of a testator. You see, and uh, without any shedding of blood, uh, there can't be any establishment or dedication of the covenant. So if the covenant has to come into force, into come into effect, there should be shedding of blood. That's the reason Jesus mentioned that uh, this is the blood of the covenant. Now, okay. Now, as we saw in Exodus twelve chapter, the three elements. You see, the lamb. You see. the bread and the bitter herbs so here also we can see three things that is uh, you see the body of jesus that was sacrificed you see that uh, jesus uh, said uh, this is the uh, bread uh, which is uh, broken for you and uh, there uh, we saw that the blood was poured on the uh, door post so similarly you see here that uh, blood of jesus uh, is uh, poured and there because of the sacrifice of that lamb you see what happened a uh, deliverance of uh, people of uh, israel uh, got happened uh. so similarly <clears throat> here because of the death of jesus a covenant is uh, established now uh, let us see the little bit of comparison little bit uh, more closely first uh, what was there you see the blood was put on the door post so what happened what is the benefit of the putting the de- blood on the door post the angel passed over from the house the angel of death passed over so similarly the blood of christ you see you see the blood of christ saves us delivers us from all our sins okay so the angel of death passes over us that means we receive the forgiveness of sins hence we are saved we are justified in god's sight okay the first thing and the second thing was that they had to eat it with how they had to eat the lamb with the bread and bitter herbs this is what that cup actually you say represents the cup what do we see we have studied in the basic class that cup represents the experiences of christ you see the cup represents the suffering of christ you know uh, the disciples uh, uh, john and james mother she came and requested jesus uh, saying please give me permission for my two sons to sit on the left hand and sit on the right hand now what did uh, jesus reply at that time it is not uh, in my power but uh, are you able to d- drink of the same cup which i am able to drink are you able to be baptized of the same uh, baptism which i am able to be baptized so the cup there even uh, when uh, the soldiers came to arrest uh, jesus uh, peter took a knife and uh, you see smot malchus what did jesus reply at that time peter keep thy sword you see shall i not drink the cup which my father has poured unto me so the cup here represents the sufferings you see that god has permitted you see for christ so similarly here the cup you see that represents that represents you see the, the what do you say the experiences you see the bitter experiences which the faithful brethren the faithful church gets through christ and what was inside the cup you see 
the blood was inside the club you see because of the blood you see the covenant was established because of the blood israel got the deliverance similarly because of that blood today we are getting deliverance so there you see the bread and the bitter herbs were together so similarly the cup and wine inside the cup here is together so uh, these uh, similarities uh, you see uh, resemblance are there between uh, exodus 12 chapter and the uh, passover that was uh, connected by jesus okay now uh, let us see uh, a little bit uh, more of a thing um, like for example uh, the lamb how was the lamb prepared okay how was the lamb to be eaten you see the lamb of the passover and the similarity is between the lamb of god you see there uh, how was the lamb prepared you see they could not just take a lamb and they could not just uh, cut it into pieces and uh, cook whatever they want uh, and eat it but god had told them to eat it in a particular way the lamb was to be prepared uh, you see in a particular way and uh, when they were supposed to eat they could not eat uh, whenever they want whatever time they want uh, you see just one day before the deliverance just before the deliverance uh, you see in the night in the evening they had to eat it so similarly let us see some resemblance in that lamb okay now how was that lamb to be what was the character of that lamb reads exodus 12 chapter hope you are all opening the bible and seeing exodus 12 chapter uh verse 5 exodus 12 chapter verse 5 exodus 12 verse 5 mm. <clears throat> your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year mm. ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats ah you see it says the lamb shall be a male of the first year now why it should be only male of the first year now what does it mean you see actually a lamb was come to one year it means it is a matured lamb that means uh, it is uh, doesn't depend on its mother you see that means uh, now the lamb can have its individual standing so similarly you see the maturity of that lamb represents the maturity of jesus now please tell me the brother who was sitting there okay what is the age that jesus took baptism Who will tell me? Jonah brother, Francis brother, Daniel brother. What is the age that Jesus took baptism? Any any idea? It is thirty years. Yes, very good. So it was at the age of thirty. Now. why age of 30 is determined there you see uh, god could have kept any age no why did jesus particularly wait till 30 years we all know very well jesus was discussing the law in the temple at the age of 12 years so he was ready even at the 12 years of age to sacrifice to the lord but why did he wait till the age of 30 because in the law the matured man means age of 30 read numbers 4 chapter verse 3 numbers 4 verse 3 anybody from solomon island can anybody read the bible is it possible for you anybody to read for jona numbers 4 verse 3 uh, numbers 4 verse 3 yeah from the 30 years old above even to 50 years old all who enter the service to do the work in the tabernacle of meetings 
very good brother very good excellent so you are uh, very good brother so there it clearly tells that anybody working in the tabernacle is age should minimum be 30 years now why 30 years sir because 30 years is a perfect man's age that is the age of maturity you see when adam was created how was he created was he created like a small baby no he was created a matured man that is at the age of 30 You see, hence, uh, if somebody had to work in a tabernacle, it should be the age of thirty. You know, uh, so you know, King Solomon. King Solomon actually wrote three books. You know, can anybody tell me which are the books written by Solomon? Huh? Francis brother or brother Daniel? Any idea? Which are the three books that were written by Solomon, King Solomon? Song, Song of Song, and Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, and Proverbs. Very good, brother. Excellent, brother. Correct. Very, very correct. See, what is the age that Solomon wrote these three books? If you see, when he was uh, anointed as the king, he was a very young girl. You see. That means he was almost in a teenager, probably around twenty uh, years uh, or nineteen uh, such age, and that is the age you see a man we usually think about uh, romancing and all these things and all, and that is the time that uh, Solomon wrote the songs of Solomon. But later on, after getting some good experience, good wisdom, knowledge, and uh, everything. You see, Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, and what is the age that he wrote the book of Proverbs? You see, it is around thirty years, because thirty years is the age of maturity. And when did he write the book of Ecclesiastes? At the end of his life, when he has gained and when he has experienced so many things and understood, you see, there is nothing greater than being obedient to God. It tells whatever he has done is. Uh, Vain, vain, vain. Uh, you see, so everything is vanity, vanity, vanity. Anyway, dear brethren. So similarly, the age of maturity is thirty years. As Jesus consecrated his life at the age of thirty years, a matured lamb. You see, a male of the first year, male. You see, he should be of the first year. That means he should be a. What do you mean? Uh, A perfect age, you see. Okay, now when they were supposed to receive the lamb in their house, read Exodus twelve three. Janet sister, Janet sister, uh, sister, can you read? Janet sister, are you able to read, sister? Can you read? Is it okay? Ah. Yes, yes. Exodus twelve three. I will bless those who bless you. Yeah. Speak ye unto all the congregation mm. of Israel mm. in the tenth day of this month. Mm. They shall take them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for one house. Very good, brother. Very good, very good. See, they were supposed to take the lamb into their house on which day? Tenth day. Okay. Now, when they were supposed to kill the lamb, you see, read or six. Exodus twelve six. Yes, Exodus twelve six. Now you shall keep it until the fourteen days of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Very good, sir. Twilight. That means in evening. That means from tenth to fourteenth evening. You know how many days? If you calculate, it is actually three and a half days. Okay. Now they were supposed to take on a tenth day, fourteenth evening, kill it. Three and a half days. What does that represent? 
You see, Jesus consecrated his life. Jesus took baptism at the age of 30 years. Okay. Now, how many years did Jesus do his ministry? Who can tell me? How many years did Jesus do his ministry? Three years. Yes, three and a half years. Exactly three and a half years. So, what is the purpose of keeping the lamb three and a half days in the house? You see, three and a half days, actually, the lamb was tested and purified. You know, how the lamb was to be eaten? It was to be eaten completely. We're not supposed to slaughter the lamb. Cut it. Cut the lamb. You see, you are to sacrifice the lamb without a bone to be broken. You see, we know, no? You see, the bone was not to be broken at all. So, the bones were to be intact. So, similarly, when Christ died, none of his bones were broken. You see, they, they tortured him. You see, they persecuted him. All these things, they chastised him. But none of his bones were broken. So, similarly, the lamb's bone was not supposed to be broken at all. It was to be eaten completely with all the things inside. Now imagine to roast it and eat, not, not boil it and eat. So imagine if all the things which were inside, you see, all the things in the intestine, you see, if the bowls are not cleared. So if you roast those things and eat, that would actually cause infection or diseases. Hence God told, to take the lamb. And for three and a half days, we're not supposed to give any food for the lamb. So what will happen? All its bowls will be completely cleared. So in this way, what will be what will be happening? You see, the lamb will be purified. First thing. Okay. And second thing, in three and a half days, they need to check if there is any blemish, any defect in the lamb. Because that lamb had to be a complete, a whole lamb without any blemish at all. You see, they were, they were supposed to, it was supposed to be very, very clear. So, what does this represent? You see, so Jesus did three and a half years of his ministry. Now, in this three and a half years, what did God do? First thing is that God completely tested Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus was tested in all ways, uh, you see, to check uh, whether uh, he is uh, pure, clean. Isn't it? Yes. Jesus was tested. Read Hebrews. Brother. Book of Hebrews. Um, fourth chapter. 15 and 16. Hebrews 4, chapter 15 and 16. Sister Janet, can you read? Yes, brother. Hebrew 4, 15 and 16. Fifteen. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Very good, sir. So, there we see that we have an high priest, you see, who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was, uh, you see, in all points tempted, like as we are, you see, yet without sin. So, all those ways, Jesus was tested, but there was no sin. 
In all the test, Jesus proved that he was sinless. He was very clean. All his bowls of the lamb was to be clean. So Jim, similarly, Jesus proved in three and a half years of all the trials and temptations that Jesus was obedient to God. Remember, after baptism, what happened? You see, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, you see, he was tempted of the devil. You see, so in all those temptations, did Jesus fall prey to those temptations? No. Jesus overcome all the temptations. So similarly, Jesus is holy, harmless, pure, separate from sinners. He is clean. Read Hebrews 7.26. Hebrews 7.26. Daniel, brother, can you read Hebrews 7.26, brother? Yes, brother. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the only heavens. Very good, brother. See, we have an high priest who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. So, Lamb was not only tested and Jesus was proved that he would remain faithful always to God. Jesus is the same yesterday. Jesus is the same today. Jesus is the same for tomorrow. He is always obedient to God. So, the Lamb was tested and not only that one, the Lamb was proved that it was clean and pure. Hence, this Lamb can be roasted now and this lamb can be partaken. So similarly, it was with Jesus. Okay. Now, what was the time that a lamb was to be slaughtered? Huh? Read Exodus 12 chapter. Exodus uh, 12 chapter verse 6. Brother. Exodus 12, 6. Jonah, brother, can you read Exodus 12, 6? Yes, brother. Exodus 12, six. verse 6. Yeah. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry. Now you shall keep it until the 14th days of the month. Then the whole assemb assemble of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Ah, kill it at twilight. Twilight means what? Evening. You know, actually, when does evening begin? You know? When does evening begin? Evening is from what time? Stenis. Oh, what is the time for you in Solomon Island? Evening means what time? In, uh, yeah, evening six uh, six p.m. Six, six p.m. Good, six. good, good. Very good. In India, you know, in uh, evening it actually begins from twelve noon. After twelve noon, it is called as evening. See, whenever you write the timings in a, a record, uh, you see, after twelve, they put p.m. post meridian. So, actually, you see, evening, there were two evenings. One evening is, uh, as you told, at uh, 6 p.m. But there was a evening from 12 noon only. From 12 noon to 3 p.m. was the first evening. And from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. was the second evening. So, there were actually two evenings for the people of Israel. So, all these things are recorded in the Bible. God willing, we will see all these things in the coming higher classes in the future days. Okay. And here, the word twilight is mentioned in your Bible. If you see in the Hebrew, the real meaning of the twilight means between the evenings. So, there were two evenings. One from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. 
other from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So they have to slaughter the lamb in between the evening means at 3 p.m. They have to slaughter the lamb. Now, remember what time did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus was on the cross for six hours. But what is the exact time that Jesus died on the cross? Let us read that Three. verse, brother. Anybody can, anybody guesses? Anybody? Very good, brother. Excellent. Mark. Mark. 15 chapter, brother. Mark 15 chapter, verse 33. Francis, brother, you're there? Brother Francis is there, brother. Can you read? I will read. Okay. Genesis. Mark 15, 33. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Ah, until the ninth hour. So the ninth hour is actually 3 p.m. So that is the time that Jesus died on the cross. So, you see, there are a lot of resemblance uh, in the Passover lamb and in the antitypical lamb. Okay, now let us see one more thing. See, how was the lamb to be eaten? You see, they had to eat in a particular house. Okay? Uh, read Exodus 12 chapter. Exodus 12 chapter, verse 3. Exodus 12, 3. Exodus 12, 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb from a household. Ah, you see, a lamb for an house. So, for one particular house, one lamb has to be taken. You see? Then after, uh, you see, killing the lamb and roasting the lamb, uh, you see, just because uh, the meat is excess, you can't go and give it to some neighbor. You can't do that one. So, it has to be eaten in that house itself. So, while eating, you can't leave this house and go to other house and eat the lamb there also. No, 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 you can't do that one. Each and every person who was staying in that house, the lamb that was slaughtered there, had to be partaken there only. You see, so it can't be taken to other house. And other people who are there in other house can't come here and eat uh, that lamb. Similarly, you know what Apostle Paul said? You see, we should all gather in one place and have this Lord's memorial. Read uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, brother. 11 chapter, 1st Corinthians, uh, 11 chapter, verse 20 and verse 33. Jonah brother, can you read 1st Corinthians 11, 20? 1st Corinthians, yeah, 1st Corinthians 11, verse 20. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. See, when you gather in one place, one house, one lamb, one place, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, that oneness. We need to partake this lamb along with the oneness of the brethren. Read verse 33 also, brother. Uh. Sorry, come again. 30. Verse 33, same chapter. 1 Corinthians 11, 33. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, 
wait for one another but if uh, sorry to page 33 therefore my brethren when you come together to eat wait for one another yes carry for one another when you come together you see the whole house actually came together to eat it so similarly this has to be partaken together with the brethren you see and uh, we already saw that the bone was not supposed to be broken so similarly christ bone was not broken at all okay now uh, the one more similarity is that who can partake of this passover lamb so in exodus you see not everybody can partake this passover lamb there was a condition what is the condition exodus 12 chapter uh verse 48 brother exodus 12 48 Exodus 12. Exodus 12, 48. Hmm. Exodus 12, 48. And when strengths are 12 with you and want to keep, wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native of the land. For no circumcised person shall eat it. Very good. Brother. So, if somebody has to partake this one, they had to be first circumcised. Circumcision was a must. So, similarly, what is our circumcision? It is not circumcision of the flesh, but circumcision of our heart. You see, we need to be consecrated. Learn the truth, understand the truth, and be immersed into the death of Christ. So that is consecration. Offering your bodies as a living sacrifice. One who is thus consecrated, you see, circumcised in the heart, only they can partake of the Lord's memorial. You see, see the resemblance? Okay. Now, one more resemblance is that that was a festival for them. Yearly one festival for the people of Israel. Very graceful festival. It's very, very important festival was the festival of the Passover. Remember, you see, uh, during the day of Pentecost, how many people had gathered there? You know, the people from 70 nations had gathered there. You have, do you know it? Read Acts of the Apostles. It was a very grand festival. Um, uh, Acts of the Apostles, second chapter, brother. Second chapter, uh, verse 2. Sorry, verse 1. Acts, second Apostles, Acts of the Apostles. Second chapter, verse 1. Can anybody read? Yes, brother. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Hmm. On the day of the Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Ah, they were all with one accord in one place, when the day of Pentecost came. This day of Pentecost was 50 days from the Passover. Now, how many people had gathered there? Read from verse 9 to verse 11. Verse 9 to verse 11. Just count how many places are mentioned there. Uh, read, sister. Yeah, verse 9 to verse 11. Padians and Medes and Elamites and those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pagias and Pamphylias, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Syrian 
pastors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, who hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful words of God. So, if you see, people from 17 places had been there. That means it was a very grand festival. Hence, uh, when Jesus was crucified, there was a huge crowd. So, similarly, this uh, memorial is the festival for us. You see, so we need to celebrate it yearly once only. Not whenever we want, weekly once or monthly once. This has to be partaken only yearly once. The Passover in Egypt was done only yearly once. As a remembrance, year and year, only yearly once, you see, the people of Israel had to repeat it. Okay? So, another similarity is that once you applied the blood on the doorpost, you see, they had to remain in that same house. So, see, you can't leave the house and go to your neighbor house and come back, back, come back again. No, there was always a danger of death uh, passing over. Even for a few seconds also, you can't go out of the house and re-enter it. Uh, you see, similarly, we need to be under the blood of lamb. You see, continuously, we need to be under the blood of lamb. We can't go out and come in. You see, so, what did Jesus say? Uh, one who has put his hand to the plow, he one who looks back is not fit for the kingdom. Once we have decided to follow Jesus, we should never turn back and see. Who was the one who turned back and saw and became a pillar of salt? That is Lord's wife. We should never turn back, dear brethren. And during the conduct of this festival, you know, God gave a law that the whole house of Israel had to be searched for leaven. There should be no salt, no leaven in the entire house. All the leaven has to be cleaned and thrown out of the house. Then only celebrate this festival. Similarly, we also have to clean ourselves. How? Read 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. Verse 6, 7, and 8. Verse 5th, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Your glory is not good, not you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lamp. Therefore, pegs out the old leaven, that you may be a new lamp, since you truly and a leaven. For indeed Christ of us was crucified for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with all leaven, no with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Yes, sister. You see? Pargot the old leaven. What is that old leaven? Malice, wickedness, hatred, all the fruits of the you see, world. Instead of those things, we need to, you see, replace it with the water. You see, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, like character likeness of Christ. Dear brethren, if such way, if we clean ourselves, you see, it really, it will be a, a blessed thing and we can surely make our calling and election sure. Dear brethren, may God bless these words. So, hope uh, it was useful and it was uh, benefiting to you all. Thank you, dear brethren. Lord bless.